Welcome to the Leading Movement Health Series. I'm your host, Phil Wagner, founder and CEO of Sparta Science. And Christy Raywalk is the director of intercollegiate athletics at the University of Delaware. And she's entering her fifth year. And I put an asterisk by this because every athletic director, you know, at this point has a almost dog years, if you will, with having to endure COVID. So she's that fifth year probably seems more like 10 or 15 to Christy. But, you know, prior to that, she was also the senior associate athletic director at Michigan, where she also served as a coach and an athlete prior to that. And that's kind of rare in sports, but it's similar to some of our military guests who've had this experience at every level of the organization as they became more in that leadership role. And so much of leadership is responding and adapting to change. And Chrissy and I were even talking about this before the call. And the NCAA has changed so much in the last five years. You know, the NIL, which is athlete compensation, open transfer rules, conferences have shifted, consolidated. But what, what's impressed me the most about Delaware and Chrissy is this professional development and communication that she's established with her staff and her team. So I'm super excited to have her on the show today. Welcome, Chrissy. Thanks so much, Phil. You know, I'm actually in year seven. I, and I thought that what you, I, I thought you were actually going to say five years, but I know seven be, because two of those were COVID and they don't really, they count, but don't count. <laughs> oh, they should count triple, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I, I always, you know, there's so many industries that have endured, you know, things like, you know, hey, the Great Depression, the Great Recession, you know, sports really never had to endure those. They actually sometimes thrive during those, but COVID was kind of the first, like, all stop for sports, you know, and so it's, yeah, it's um, certainly was. Yeah, kudos to you for enduring that and, and coming out stronger. Yeah. We certainly believe that. I mean, we, when we were living in it, it was hard, but we felt like, what do we need to do to thrive as we mm. come out of this? Right. Yeah. And you talked about thriving. We, we talked a little bit before we even started is why, why is health so important, at least to your organization, or why do you see it important to any organization um, based on a lot of the, the initiatives you've set up and the hiring and the development? Yeah. I, you know, at the, at the end of the day, you know, the core of what we do for our student athletes is about their overall health and well-being, And, you know, in the four or five years they're with us, it's about what, what are we doing to help them become the best versions of themselves and you know the the idea and the concept of well being as a whole is, is something that we embrace in everything that we do, and that includes the investment that we've made in our staff and that resource. But I think equally as important is how we use the investments that we've made mm-hmm. in our people. And you know we we have created what I think is one of the best sport performance programs in the country. I'm not going to shy away from that. And I think part of that is because we are incredibly smart with how we use the resources that we have, that we've invested in. That was something that when we came here, we made a very clear commitment to, because as I mentioned at the core of it, you know, our people, we succeed through people. Mm. And the only way to ensure their success is to invest in them. And, you know, what we happen to do is we do that through sport and, you know, their ability to be healthy, strong, um, mentally, physically, emotionally, socially, it all matters. Mm. It all matters. And in order for us to be able to be successful, you know, we have to have those investments in place and we have to have really clear expectations with how we work together Mm. and to ensure that we are um, doing everything we can to put our people in the best positions to be successful. And, you know, the last comment I'll make here about it is, is that, that that I consider people to be our staff, our coaches and our student athletes. Mm. And it is why I think we have one of the best sport performance programs in the country. It's not just because the results we're producing and how we're using those resources. It's about how we're investing in everybody. I mean, the, the things that we've done, at Delaware have really allowed strength and conditioning folks to expand their portfolio of, of tools, Hmm. athletic training, nutrition, strength and condition, or excuse me, I already said, uh, uh, sports psychologists, Hmm. sport med, our coaches, like they're coming now to the table and, and really expanding their understanding of health and well-being and how it all connects together. And, 
you know, they go to school for this one thing, right? And you you have some sense of other components of well-being as you're going through your academic experience, but you don't really live it until you're working. It's just the reality. That experiential component is so important to your to your ability to be successful. And um, and so again, that is an expectation here. That is a um, intention in everything that we do, the processes and the systems that we have built out all feeds back into how are we holistically caring and feeding for our people. And again, that includes our staff, our coaches, and our student athletes. Yeah, that's great. I, I just listening to you talk, you, you, when you ask people a lot of times, like, what are they doing for the health? They, they immediately gravitate towards what, Hey, we've got this facility, we've got this technology and you kept using the word how, right. And it really focuses on that integration, that adoption, like, how are we integrating it? How are we doing it? And that's so much more impactful than the what. The what is more of the, you know, the sizzle a lot of times, but that sizzle fades, you know, and, and how you do things is so much more sustainable. So, you know, talk a little bit when you when you say how, you know, you really keyed on the people. Are there certain frameworks or or, you know, logistics or kind of patterns that you guys use to, you know, really improve, continue to improve that how? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And and part of this, and as I shared this, I need that yeah. uh, because I, I, I love change and, mm-hmm. and I thrive in being innovative and entrepreneurial, which I think is incredibly important in our work. As you described the changing landscape of college athletics, you, you have to have that sense and that be conscious of it, but you certainly also need to be very disciplined mm-hmm. in, in your work and in, you know, how you use your time and how you use all your resources. And, and we do, like I said, I believe we're the smartest athletic department in the country because we're focused on how we use our resources. And that is our money. That is our time. And that is our talent. Mm-hmm. And, and so, but you need really good systems and processes in place to help you ensure that everything that I just said actually does happen. And so probably, I mean, I've always been uh, a believer in utilizing goals and metrics and and those types of things. And it was probably five years ago where I was talking to a colleague and I'm like, I still haven't figured out this, to how to master this. It's making right. me crazy. And I always made it a little bit more complicated than it needed to be. And so I, I did some reading on OKRs, which is objective key results that came out of um, Google, actually, I think probably now 30 years ago, maybe. And it, and it really is a very simple structure, uh, not easy to implement necessarily, but we are now in year five and we have altered it to make it Delaware specific, but it ultimately leads us to what are the four objectives that we have in the department and what are the key results that we are going to identify that feed into that objective and help us ultimately achieve our winning aspiration. And, and so you know, everybody in the department participates in it. Everybody coaches, everybody, everybody's really clear on, on what it is we're striving towards, why we're striving towards it. How are we measuring that success? Uh, we do quarterly check-ins and we change. Like if we do a quarterly check-in on something and we're like, oh man, we didn't realize we were going to need to do X, Y, and Z in order to accomplish that. We're like, well, is it still something that is a priority? Okay, then what are we going to have fall off the plate in order to be able to continue to stay focused on that? So we really have gotten comfortable with ebbing and flowing a bit mm. uh, and recognizing, like I said, there is that nimbleness that you need to have in in our world that um, that is necessary. And, and it is that tension of, of staying strategically disciplined, yet also... Uh, being nimble. So that, that is something that we have talked a lot about. So that's one that we use. Mm. Um, the other that I think particularly in this area, we have care meetings, which brings everybody together. And this is for every sport. It happens um, every month and, and it can happen more than that, but certainly every month we bring together all of the different uh, elements, all the different individuals that have something to do with the sport performance and the well being of our student athletes. And that even includes our academic folks as well. Uh, and all of our, all the coaches for those different, for each team. Hmm. And, um, and we talk about them, right. Hmm. We talk about each of the student athletes in each of those areas and really understanding uh, we have kind of this red, yellow, green system, if you will. And, and the reds are people that are having a tough time right now in some area. And the reality is you're dealing with one person and it comes back to why we work the way we work. 
one human, one, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and it's our responsibility as the professionals in the room, if you will, to tie it all together and be able to create clarity, consistency in communication with that one individual. Mm. It's not their responsibility to translate this stuff. Mm. It's ours. Mm. And, and so we have to be incredibly well connected in order for us to be able to do that really, really well. Mm. You know, it, it doesn't help the individual or us if they hear one message from our academic person and one from our strength and conditioning person and one from our athletic training person, and they're all uniquely different, right? Yeah. We need integration. We need consistency. Uh, and that only also develops a high level of confidence from our student athletes that we're all in this together. Mm. We're all, we're, we're all speaking the same language. Um, and we're all really conscious of who that person is and what they need. Yeah, th that's great to hear. I mean, a lot of times it's an it's an issue in healthcare as well. I mean, you know, you, when people have patients or um, you know parents that are patients and older, a lot of times it requires, you know, the the child, the son, the daughter to accompany them to be to the one to translate all of this. Like mm -hmm. you're talking about, it shouldn't be on the athlete, it shouldn't be on the patient to translate all this. It's really on the professionals to coordinate a more united front of communication so mm -hmm. they don't have to translate it. Right. It's, it's, you know, it's a great comment. And I think the other one I'm just latching onto is this, this, you know, strategic discipline, you know, growth mindset is, is a great term and, a, you know, but it's purely about opening up and being curious where strategic discipline has a little bit of uh, contrast in it, right. Being the strategy and the growth mindset and open, but the discipline of like, Hey, We've got to commit to some things, right? Um, can't always be thinking about what's next. Yeah. Well, I think a big part of when you're when you're in those moments, and you know, I think the interesting thing, and it was really important for me, is like this is a muscle, right? That your organiz it's an organizational muscle that you're developing mm. in everybody. Because if you want it to work, everybody needs to have that muscle. We all understand in the world of health, it takes time to develop those muscles. Definitely. And and if you're not in the gym working on it every day, you mm. you, you don't it doesn't happen. And mm. so, you know, we've talked a lot about guys, we're building the muscle. Mm. We're building the muscle. Everybody got to stay in it. If we yeah. want to be health, a healthy organization, if when I take the the Delaware Athletics to a doctor for a checkup, I want them to say you know, you you got an A minus, you're good, right? Or right. or a B plus or whatever is that? Yeah. And and so, what are the factors that I'm considering when I'm going to the doctor? Mm -hmm. And and how am I how am I ensuring that we're putting ourselves in the best position to get that you know good bill of health, if you will? And and so, you know, a, as we look at moments where you have these like, oh my gosh, should we go down this path right now, or do we stay on the road? you know, we're always coming back to how is that going to help us win? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's the United. How is, how is that thing. helping us win and yeah. win in the classroom, win in competition? You know, it's not like always on the field win. It's like, how is that helping us advance and win? And I would say not just win for Delaware athletics, but win for the university of Delaware, mm. win for the state of Delaware, right? Like how is that helping us win? Right. And we yeah, keep it really pretty simple. It's interesting. One of the examples I saw of, of OKRs was, you know, around a, a NFL team and the, and the ultimate OKR was win the Super Bowl and then working backwards, right? <laughs> you know, how does this, and that yep. simplified example, how does this help us win a Super Bowl? You know, you know, university athletics are a little bit more nuanced and complicated um, because they're student athletes, but, but certainly having that central um, triangulation, if you will, now, when you look at those, like you've obviously got a great, you know, system in place and, and, and using that organizational muscle. So what's the future, you know, what do you, what are you kind of looking out of, Hey, is there, there, here's a place that we're looking to evolve and grow. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it's on that sports science and analytics side, mm. which is ultimately bringing all this to together in kind of this culmination. I mean, mm. you know, this, this is, yeah. you, you live this every day. It's what you're yeah. trying, what you aspire to continue to try and feed us, right. And mm. feed the country in these ways to help us be healthy and smart in everything that we're doing. But, you know, it's now been probably three years that we started. Christina Rasnick has started our sport performance 
the, the analytics and sports science component. And so as we've lived in that over the last couple of years, really we've invested in Sparta, as you know, we've invested in um, Statsport, a GPS system, and we have a leap form uh, in our weight room. And so those are data points that we have really invested in for all student athletes. And she's created dashboards and we have other components that we use as well. Um, but we have this like kind of fitness grade, right. That, that, yeah. that we've identified and, and really understanding how, um, you know, what we need to do with that one individual to ensure that they don't injure themselves. I mean, ultimately that's what this is about, right. Is that we want to keep them on the field or in the pool and, and they're doing everything that, that, that we can to, to put them in a position to be successful. Um, so that continues to evolve and expand for us. Mm. We continue to work to get smarter. We continue to add in more sports specific types of um, sports science, uh, excuse me, sport, yeah, sports science mm. on the health side. Right. So that, that we, we continue to, to get smarter there. And then what we're beginning as well, let me actually comment on that because what I want is I want that to be who we are. And so when I'm hiring a coach or I'm hiring a, somebody in sport performance, they're coming into our system. Mm. Like I'm not going to, I want their feedback. We need their, um, we need to understand how are they going to play? You know, when we right. changed football coaches, how our former coach played versus how our current coaches play is very different. Right. And so we had to take the data and look at it differently. Right. And consider it differently based on his style of play. Yep. So that I certainly want coaches to come in and bring that information in. But they're not going to change the, st- the, the, the systems we're in and the infrastructure that we have. Mm. We're not going to adapt to them. They're going to adapt to us. And to be very honest, the coaches we brought in, they're thrilled about that. They're like, you yeah. have that? Oh, yeah. my God, this is awesome. Yeah. And and then we continue to work to get smarter. So that's on the, what I would say the help side of things. Yeah. Then on the analytic side, and this is how we're defining it, Delaware, this is more about money ball, right? <laughs> this is more those tendencies of, you know, when I shoot right 80 times, I make 50% of them. And, you know, at, at the number 40 is when my shoulder starts to drop and I get tired and I miss more, et cetera, et cetera. Or when you're scouting an opposing team. And so we're going to build out a part of our department where that is again, kind of this centralized function that is assigned to each team Mm -hmm. that helps us understanding that side of the world. And then ultimately big, big, it's like, then how do those, how do we connect those two? Mm -hmm. Is there a way that where, where is the, where is the way to connect them? What, what does that look like ultimately? Um, You know, the reality is it's one of the fastest growing, growing parts of our industry. Yes. is this world, right? And you yes. know this. And we have students that are coming to Delaware and choosing to come to Delaware, even though we don't have an academic program because they can work with us and because mm-hmm. of how we are working. And we're actually working with our academic partners right now to build a major in this because we have so many. We went from having four interns to having 30. Mm. It's it's insane. Yeah. And it's awesome, right? It's awesome. And so our ability to grow that and, and have that really become a staple for us. And it comes back to like, you know what that is? That's really freaking smart is what yeah. it is, yeah. right? It's, it's just smart. And, and for us to build that structure and those systems within us versus relying on coaches to bring it to us hmm. uh, creates this sense of sustainable success or gives us a chance to have sustainable success regardless of who's coaching. And, and obviously the coaching is critically important. I mean, right. they, they, they are the key to our success, but at the end of the day, they don't have to worry about that stuff necessarily because it's mm. built in. Mm. They have to learn how to use it. They have to understand how, how, how um, it's going to help them win. But at the end of the day, it just is, you know, it's a component of, of who we are and we built it within the department, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I, I don't think um, a lot of universities take advantage of the academic resources that can be leveraged to combine and integrate within athletics. You know, I, I, I know that, um, you know, your schedule's extremely busy. And so wanted to kind of wrap up all the lessons I know that I've learned and, and kind of simplify those into kind of take homes. And one is this strategic discipline principle that you have of, hey, this is an organizational muscle that we've got to be, you know, 
using and improving on a daily basis to balance the the strategic side, the curiosity, the growth mindset with the conviction and the discipline. And a big way that that's, you know, leveraged, we talked about things like OKRs and um, care meetings and and really, it's all based on this foundation. The second takeaway for me is it's all about the how more than the what, you know, and the how is, you know, you know, the people and how they communicate more than the facility, the technology. And I was going to use Moneyball earlier, but you beat me to it, right? It's a lot of times, you know, how do you use what you have better, that how. And then the third piece, the future, which is great is, okay, let's start layering on more personalized metrics and data to improve the framework that we already have in place. And that's where the, the future opportunity and growth lies is continue to be more accurate, more individualized, more personalized. Um, so, you know, just some. Yeah. And not needing, yeah. not needing 60 staff members to use right. it, to do it. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's, that's the part that, I mean, we, we can't afford to do that at Delaware, but it's not necessary. Right. Yeah. Well, I think Through that's the, the use track. of technology. It, and really, again, being really smart, you don't need 60 people, right? right. You, right. you don't. If you use your systems, the technology, and the staff you have really, really well, mm. you don't need that. Mm. And I know it. it is. It is the trap. And it's what people run to because they. here's the reality, Phil, and you know this. It's hard to do what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything that I'm saying, and you know this, you've built this company, is like, well, that sounds easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard. The adoption, the integration, that's that's the hill to climb, you know. And, it is uh, the hill. And, and that's uh, probably where that strategic discipline comes in. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, Chrissy, thank you so much for joining. No, thank you. I, I always appreciate having these conversations with you. Thanks for all that you've done uh, in this part of the world because it matters and it has certainly helped us get better. And, um, you know, we're, 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 we're continuing to rely on you to help us get better and be smarter for the good of our student athletes and for the good of our people. Well, yeah, thank you. It's, it's certainly a partnership and we're, we're grateful for it.